my name is Professor and I approve of this video. Hey guys, welcome back to another video from Fable Stand, and here's another unboxing video. So just so you know, I unfortunately unboxed it already in my previous attempt to film this unboxing video. My um, camera ran out of memory, so I have to stop and then I have to like delete some of the files on my SD card and I have to do that on the computer and then as I did that, I deleted the clip that I had when I actually opened like the wrapping, uh, the plastic wrapping and then kind of just some of my initial impressions and that kind of thing. So I lost that, couldn't get it back. Um, it wasn't in the trash can, I think it just got directly deleted from the, you know, just from the camera. So I lost it. So it's an unboxing video, but it's, I kind of unboxed it already, but I haven't looked through the cards yet. So my impressions are still fresh. So just so you know, I'll be unboxing this Spirit Song Tarot by Paulina, uh, by Paulina Cassidy. So I bought the Spirit Song Tarot and the reason that I bought it was because I kept seeing gorgeous pictures of this deck and everybody was like, it's so awesome, it's so pretty. So I could not stop myself from getting this deck and plus it's an animal tarot deck and I love animal archetypes and therefore I must have it. So anyway, it's in my hands now. I waited for over a week. It was this long, grueling wait and it was raining all week. Ah, the tragedy. First four problems. Anywho, I really love the box. It's really pretty. I love the pastel colors. If you open it, you could see that it's, um, I don't know if it's baby pink. I'm really terrible with color names. But yeah, it's really pretty and there's some like floral patterns, doodles at the, um, just the surface of the box. Inside it's pink. And then I'm really excited about this card, the Ace of Pentacles or the Ace of Crystals, which is represented by a panda. I find that really interesting because in the Animal Totem Tarot, the panda is represented by the Ace of Swords. So, so that's interesting. I, I'm really curious to see what are the animals that Polina and Cassidy picked for each suit and I'm, I'm interested to see how each, um, how the elements come into play and how they interact with the newly reinterpreted um, minor arcana. So according to the back, acorns for wands and fire, feathers for swords and air, shells for cups and water, crystals for coins and earth. So I know like in the animal wisdom tarot, the four suits are also reinterpreted into shells and feathers and what was the other one? Chalices? No. Spirals? I forgot. I need to double check. But yeah, that's another animal tarot deck that I love. So I'm just going to quickly read you this. Spirit Song Tarot energizes the cards of traditional tarot with the maj majestic beauty and wisdom of 78 animals that have been called upon to help guide you on your life journey. So, Paulina Cassidy's exquisite artwork invites you to connect to the spirit of each animal specifically selected based upon sh uh, sh um, shamanic symbolism. That's really cool. I've always been interested in shamanism or shamanism. I hope I'm not butchering the pronunciation here. But yeah, so I, I already unboxed this. So I already seen the little guidebook. It's really pretty. Again, like I really love the backing. There's like these like floral patterns and doodles. You don't know, I'm a doodler. So I really love designs like this. So it's pretty awesome. And I think it's a nice, decent amount of chunky. It's not too chunky, but just enough to hold in your hand. It feels like a book, not just like a little booklet. And yeah, I love the way it's packaged. I love the font. Um, I think I'll just pick a few of my favorite cards and then just read it. Let's go to The Fool. It used to be Temperance. That was my favorite card, but now it's definitely The Fool. So instead of The Fool, it's been renamed The Traveler, and the animal is The Gazelle. Keywords are adventure and potential. Message. Free-spirited gazelle is the explorer of new paths and the seeker of new adventures. Following his intuition, he bounds gracefully into the unknown. He swiftly changes direction and zigzags to avoid complications. As a result of his ability, he's comfortable in his own vulnerability. Gazelle prompts you to harness your own youthful enthusiasm that will help fuel the way the new to new experiences in a bright future. At the same time, he wants you to remember to look where you're going when leaping into new terrain. With faith and optimism, allow yourself to flow with life. That's pretty cool. So I actually saw the full card or the traveler card. Because I try to film the, um, I try to um, go through the cards earlier, and I was saying like I really love the renamed title, which was the Traveler, and I I love journey the journey uh, motif or metaphor you know using it as a metaphor to represent life. 
uh, for me, life has always been a journey, it's an adventure in which we level up, we explore ourselves, we explore the landscapes, uh, new landscapes and old landscapes and rediscovering places that we have been or we have never been. So the Traveler, I feel, is really awesome. A reinterpretation of the of the full. I mean, I guess he's always been a traveler, but I have yet to see the rest of the deck. But yeah, so that's the back. I already reacted to this to this backing, and I thought it was absolutely gorgeous. Um, yeah, I love the lotus. Eh, I kind of don't like this little like. You can see it says U.S. Games. Why do you have to put it up there? We know, we know it's already on the box. Don't put it on the back. Anywho, there's borders, but I, I feel like it doesn't really distract from the artwork. It kind of just blends in. It's one of those one of those decks, but I might consider trimming it. Maybe. Oh, but I don't want to cut into this backing, like the tops and the bottoms of it. I'll see. Okay, let's see what else is in store. The Magician, of course, is the Raven. Raven, interesting, because Raven is usually... I, I think I remember seeing there's like influences of Native American or into Jenna's mythology. I don't know, Raven is usually the trickster character. And for me personally, I usually associate the trickster archetype with the fool, just because he's a cosmic zero, you know, he's a number zero. He doesn't really fit into the narrative. He's always outside of the narrative, observing the narrative, also participating in it, but he's kind of like his own, his own being. So I always, always thought the fool is the trickster. But I suppose the magician could be a trickster because I know the trickster archetype could be categorized as a subcategory for the magician archetype. So, all right, intuition. I believe this is a cat. Okay, so it doesn't tell you what animal it is on the card. So I guess you just have to look at the guidebook or you just kind of have to know. This is the high priestess. And let's see if it's a cat or not. Cat, 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 or lynx. It's a lynx. Yeah, I thought it was a lynx. Intuition and sacred knowledge. I'm not going to read everything. That's going to take forever. But cool. Anything catty is, is fine by my book. The Empress. That's an interesting selection of animal. Because um, just from the animal decks I've seen, the Empress is usually the cow. I think in both animal decks, animal totem and animal wisdom, I think they're both depicted by the cow. Something like that. But yeah, uh huh. So it's a rabbit or hare. What is the animal depicted? Oh, it's a rabbit. Beauty and abundance. Okay. And then I think I'll just keep this handy in case I come across another animal that I'm not sure about. So emperor is represented by the cougar. I kind of wish they just put the animal on the card so you would just know. So that's the cougar. Love that there's lots of felines in here. Oh, so instead of the Hierophant, it's been renamed a Shaman or Shaman. I love how powerful, I think, I, I believe that's the Eagle. Unless it's a Falcon, yeah, it's the Eagle. I love how the connection with the sky and I love Eagle is, um, it's such a powerful sort of, it's like the vision that the eagle had, like the perspective the eagle has because of its connection with the sky, because of its ability to fly. It's just such a fierce, such a fierce hierophant or a shaman. So I, I like it. I, I like how it's not like as nerdy as the traditional Rider Waite Smith her, um, hierophant. Love, lovers is renamed love. And I believe those are wolves. That's interesting. I love the, the pack mentality of the wolf. And I think it's an interesting depiction of the lover, or in, the, in this case, love. Yeah, because the wolves are all about surviving in a pack, being with the pack, also making decisions based on the pack. And for me, lovers, it's really about relationships, how you, re how you relate to people, how you're able to trust people, how you're able to create bonds with people. So I think wolves, that's a pretty, that's a pretty apt. I like it. I, I like how... Get you, Polina Cassidy. I like how you're saying this. Yes! <laughs> the chariot is the freaking rhino. Yes! Yes! I would have picked rhino too if I were to create like an animal deck. Speaking of chariot though, I do love the chariot from Animal Totem. It's an orca. I love the playful vibe, but I love the stubborn, like, uh, resilient, like, almost like hot headed, passionate. Um, vibe giving up by the rhino it's just like don't fuck with me because i'm gonna succeed no matter what you tell me so i love it i think i'm going to love working with this deck a lot 
I think our worldviews kind of match. I think we've got similar personalities. Strength, it's an elephant and not a tiger or any other feline. Elephant to me is such a spiritual animal. Like, it's just incredibly deep, profound, and maternal. And if I understand, if I remember correctly, I know elephants are also, they're a matriarchal society. And um, the reason why is because elephants actually have, <laughs> actually have flaps around their vagina they can actually regulate sex like they they it's like an impossibility to uh to a for male elephant to just do whatever he wants with a female elephant like he actually has to act, ask permission because that's just how their bodies are structured and uh therefore elephants are a matriarchal society i remember watching this ted talk or a youtube video saying that rather a society or like a system like, um, you know, I guess society, human society, animal society, whether if it's patriarchal or matriarchal, it's determined by the sexual relationships and the sexual structures of, like, of the species, of the body of the species. I thought it was really interesting, but that's beside the point. But just FYI, if you're, if you never thought about it before. There! <laughs> there! <laughs> I love this! I love it! The hermit is a koala! That's the cutest Hermie ever. I can't even speak. I need to read the guidebook for this. Like, Hermit. Okay. Koala. I will hold it up for you so you can see. A beacon of well-being, Koala is your guide in acquiring the rest needed to regroup and renew. A seeker of truth and wisdom, he illuminates the way. Calm and observant, Koala stills the mind so that he may access higher wisdom. Love it! I love how he's just like this cute little thing on the top of a tree branch, sleeping his day away but actually contemplating maybe doing some astral traveling. I don't know, but this is the most adorable hermit ever. I really love the vision of this deck. The wheel. Oh, it's the octopus. Interesting. I personally don't understand this choice, though. But I love the artwork, and I'm gonna read the guidebook to see what Belina Cassidy means by this. Okay. Octopus. Change and possibilities. Events may at times seem random, but the will of light holds an intelli intelligent structure and a higher working force. Akin to the energies of the turning wheel, octopus is a master in adapting fluidity to change. That's what I was thinking, because I remember watching this Discovery um, Channel video, or was it Animal Planet, or are they the same thing? I don't know. How, like, certain species of octopuses, they could really adapt to the environment by by camouflaging or shape-shifting. Shape-shifting, not, not as in, like, actually changing the structure of their body, but, you know, how they are so fluid and they're kind of, like... Boneless. <laughs> they could sort of bend their bodies in a certain way to mimic like sea snakes or um, seaweed or other types of animals depending on the creatures that are around them as a survival mechanism. So I think octopus is a really interesting choice because I believe the will represents change as well. It's about, it's not really about I guess it's not really about luck because luck is how you interpret change. Luck is a positive change, maybe something an unexpected change that's good for you. But if it's bad luck or bad fortunes, it's a change that's often negatively charged. So really, change itself is neutral, just how you interpret it and how you inter like something you interpret as positive doesn't have to be positive in the minds of another. So, like I said, change is neutral. So I like it. I like the choices so far. Oh my god, I should probably get going, because uh, there's a lot of decks to go through. Transformation, yes, it's a cicada. I love it, I love it. So that would be death. And I don't know, I personally prefer a darker version of death, like a darker interpretation of death, just because I feel like there's certain weight and gravity that comes with metamorphosis and transformation. It's not like a pretty process, but you know, cicadas, it's like a long gestating process, right? Because it takes them 17 years to really formulate their bodies and then exit their cocoon but I still prefer like a darker version of death like I really want the weight to be there because sometimes transformations aren't easy it's like a committed choice you know you don't just be like voila and then you transform like it's a committed choice it's, it's a choice that you make every day and sometimes those choices are really difficult like you really have to show up for yourself when you're trying to transform when you're trying to sort of like um 
when you're trying to like cultivate change and transformation. So I personally prefer like something more weighty and meaty when it comes to the death archetype, but I love Sakata, so no complaints. Interesting. The tower is... Oh, lots of interesting choices here. The tower is um, here. The tower is uh, a chameleon. A chameleon? What? Okay, I swear I'm not going to read this, read the guidebook as much, but this is the major icon, so I do get some excuses. Is the shaman of adaptation. Seizing the power of cloaking, he changes color to blend with his shifting surroundings. Life is change, and you, th you have the choice to either accept change or to resist it. I really love the philosophy of this deck and the philosophy of this book. So changing colors, changing the colors of your being. Mm. I, I, I get why it's reinterpreted this way, but I just feel like I also prefer some gravity and weight when it comes to the darker cards in tarot. I mean, I use different decks for different things, I guess, but I just want a bit more like, a bit more gravity when it comes to like the death and tower, I feel. I feel like devil can be interpreted because I don't really have a heavy view on devil. I mean, I see devil as shadow work, uh, working through the issues within yourself, accepting yourself, that kind of thing. So it's not really like a really weighty card for me just because I, I, I always liked reflecting on things. I've always liked doing shadow work. So it's not really like something big, but I think definitely the changes, the things that I want to accomplish that comes from those changes, from the insight that I get from shadow working. That's death and tower for me. That's that's a lot of work. So that's why I want more weight. The sun is the hummingbird. I can kind of see that. Like there's such a spiritual openness when it when it comes to hummingbirds. I want to definitely want to uh, research into this our animal archetype more. The world is the whale. Yes, definitely I agree with this choice. The whale is just so loving, gentle, open, compassionate, and majestic. It's just so in the, this epic state of being and it's so huge like the physical size of a whale is huge and it just i don't know it's just this sense of freedom and embodiment uh, embodiment and i i like the choice here okay so minor kana time i haven't gotten to the court cards yet ace of acorns two of acorns i love the word acorn because acorns grow into oaks and i love the the growth metaphor Okay, four of acorns. Lots of interesting animal choices here. And seven of acorns, eight of acorns. I'll just show you. Ooh, ten of acorns. That's really cool. Is that a horse or a unicorn? I need to know. But here it is. Observe and tell me if, this, if that's a if that's a a horse or a unicorn. Oh, never mind. It's a donkey. Sorry. <laughs> oh, I guess the ears. Yeah, it makes sense responsibility and dedication okay so it kind of removes the family and legacy vibe from the ten of pentacles though unless there's a, like an archetypal aspect that i don't know about but yeah i think definitely legacy is i guess achieved by hard work it's achieved through dedication so i think donkey makes sense in that regard nine of acorns i believe that's a boar or a wild pig and if you haven't seen Princess Mononoke, features a lot of um, pig gods or pig deities or wild, wild boar deities that represent nature. It's a very dark and intriguing film um, about the relationship between humans and nature and stuff like that. So you should definitely check it out. Queen of Acorns, King of Acorns. That's a horse, right? Please tell me that's a horse and not a donkey. Like. I'm not this blind, right? That is a horse, right, guys? Guys, right? Right, that's a horse. Let me just double check. There we go, horse. Optimis op optimism and innovation. So, I don't know if... Because usually horses are associated with the knights, right? They're like Knights are usually really mobile animals. They're usually being chosen for that. Ace of shells is a turtle or a sea turtle or turtoise. No, turtoise is mountain turtles. I'm not sure. I remember one time I looked at the difference between a turtle and a turtoise. I think it's just between like land and sea, but forgot which one is which. The elements aren't really restricted to just one species. I think I know in wisdom, animal, tarot, wisdom, animal, wisdom, tarot, I think each suit in each main, a minor arcana is, is like one specific species or just, it's sort of like the same collection of animals, if I remember correctly. Three of shells. I love dolphins. 
I love dolphins as an animal archetype. I like how they're playful, intelligent, and they really value friendship. I'm not an archetype I can really identify with. Five of shells, is that a firefly? That is interesting. That reminds me so much of Grave of the Fireflies. It's a tragic, tragic movie. I'm a big crybaby when it comes to really emotional scenes in movies. I can cry at a kid's flick. Like, I cry when I was watching... Like, I can cry watching Disney cartoons. Like, I cried at everything. And this movie... Well, not this movie. The Grave of the Fireflies by Ghibli or Miyazaki. It was so sad and cold and melancholy that I have no tears. For that movie it's just i finished the movie i was just in this state of like i just feel so empty that the world that was portrayed in that movie it was like so real to the characters and then the things that happened to these kids during wartime it was just it was just that that weight was it just made me feel so empty anyway another great film though just i'm not watching it again anytime soon my heart's gonna break my heart can take that pressure i love the details like the the feathers. <laughs> it's a suit of feathers. There's gonna be feathers, but I just love the details, the brush strokes, and I love Ten of Feathers. It's presented by a snake. Page of Feathers is a raccoon. I love how, like, there's some really adorable animals in here. I mean, some animals are just really adorable anyway, but I just, I love how lovingly and adorably they're portrayed in this, in this deck. Here comes the panda card, Ace of Crystals. Okay, so this is something that I'm gonna read. Ace of Crystals, Manifestation and Prosperity. And let's see why it's represented by the Ace of Pentacles uh, compared to the Ace of Swords in Animal Totem Tarot. So that's the Feathers, Crystals, Crystals. Yeah, Ace of Crystals. Ace, 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 Ace. Okay, Panda, Manifestation and Prosperity. Message, Panda is gifted with the magic of manifesting good fortune. Centered and calm, she is your guide in staying grounded while you pursue your goals. Allow your highest potential to be nurtured with patience and know that you already possess the skills needed to achieve results. Successful ventures are on the horizon and will be brought to fruition if you begin with a strong foundation. So it talks about fulfillment and creative energy. Manifestation and prosperity. Hmm, that's kind of like contradicting with what I know about pandas because I know pandas are about balance. It's about, it's just about holding energies and holding tension in a way that's not damaging to you. It's it's about sort of going with the flow. It's about chilling with the vibes. It's about being mellow. I, I, I made a video about panda archetypes. So that, that's what pandas mean to me. And they're just so chill. They're just a really chill archetype. So I don't know why it's placed as the animal archetype for manifestation. I don't know if it's because it's related to Chinese culture and then Chinese culture has this sort of like, you know how, uh, I mean, I'm Chinese, I'm from Taiwan, like, I, I, like there's this like need to like, you know, find like an auspicious date or find something that's lucky. Like luck is a good, like it's a prominent sort of cultural theme in Chinese culture. So I wonder if that's, that's, that's what, sort of that's like this, sort of, it's also channeling the Chinese culture, like the idea of luck and fortune and auspici uh, auspiciousness and and manifesting what you want. So that could be it. But for me though, pandas are still that symbol of like being really chill, being really like playing Tai Chi and it's about balance. So yeah, so that's my panda. But I can't understand where this panda is coming from and I don't mind this panda either. So pandas are awesome in general. Ooh, a ladybug. Five of crystals. That's interesting. Because if I were to choose, I would probably put the ladybug as the ace of pentacles or the ace of crystals. Just because for me, ladybug is the sign symbol of luck and like prosperity and manifestation and especially luck. Because it's like such a tiny red dot on the wall. And you just feel like you discover like a treasure or something when you see a ladybug. So, I looked through the entire deck. I hope that didn't take too long. Verdict is I love the colors and I love a lot of animal choices in here. There's like a few that I didn't agree with but I can still work with just because I can also step into the perspective. So nothing too like blah, blah, blah crazy. But overall, I really love it. I love the philosophy of these decks. I love the sh uh, shamanic influence. I love the art. And I like how this deck isn't as busy as the Polina Cassidy tarot because I know that deck is just... Maybe it's because these are more focused on animals, it's more portraity, it's more about like portraying the animals and presenting the animals, maybe in their environment and also with the elemental and energies of the suit and symbols of the suit. 
So I think maybe it's relatively simpler just because it's a snapshot of that animal. It's not just like a descriptive or a scenery depiction of what that archetype is like in the Polina Cassidy tarot, like the pa Polina tarot, which is um, the art, it's like much busier and it's like a lot more going on in here. But yeah, definitely recommend this deck. I think it's under $25 when I bought it in Canadian dollars. I'm not sure how much it is in American dollars. It's such a nightmare to shop in Canada, guys. <laughs> this is like all I complain about. First world problems. Focus in focus. Yeah, I really love it. I love the dually vibe, like I said, and I love all the animal. Uh, I love most of the animal choices in here, and it just it's ama it's an amazing deck, and I really am really really excited about it. It's such a good like it it's such it feels like an indie deck too, like just the way it's packaged, like it feels like an indie deck. Like this reminds me of the Wild Unknown box, but just less fancy. It's still pretty fancy though. Like I really love it. It's really great. It's packaged really great. But I guess don't judge a deck by its covers or by its packaging because it's about the messages that can be brought by working with these archetypes. So, but if you do judge a deck with its packaging, then I don't think you will be disappointed in the Sparrow Song Tarot. It's great. Alright, so I think that's it for my unboxing. Thanks for watching and embarking on this journey with me. Sorry I couldn't do like the actual, like capture, I, I couldn't capture the actual physical action of the unboxing on this camera because I lost a clip but yeah the all the reactions are were, were still fresh like all the reactions you know when I saw these these cards and also just letting you know that I'm doing an Instagram giveaway next week um, on Monday so I don't know when I'll be publishing this probably tomorrow or but yeah it will be on December the week of the, the following Monday like check the description box the date will be there uh the giveaway one for a week so we have lots of time to participate i'll be giving away free readings free ebooks maybe i'll see still finalizing the details but i'm hosting a giveaway i want to do a giveaway on youtube but it just the last giveaway was such bullshit just because like sometimes youtube would eat the comments like sometimes i can't see an entry and it just messaging was really weird and i couldn't message people people couldn't message me and i had it was just a nightmare, so I'm never gonna do a giveaway on YouTube again. So probably it will be on my Instagram um, or on my blog. Probably, mostly, it's gonna be on my Instagram. So it's just such an easier platform to do a giveaway. And yeah, I think that's it. And don't forget that there's a Winter Den sale going on. Lots of readings are 25% off. My Game of Thrones ebook is 25% off. 31 original spreads, go, so go check it out. I'm doing a revamped edition of that, so... If you're not really into adorable illustrations, there's also this more serious, like, medieval sword-looking uh, edition. So that's going to be on my shop as well. And you get both editions when you purchase one copy. So it's just going to be part of the listing. And if you already purchased the copy, you can get a, also get that copy if you already bought the adorable version. So, so that's upcoming. Probably going to be up next week or two weeks, in a, in a week or two. But that's coming. What else? Uh, I think that's it. Anything else, any news or whatever, it will be in my description box if I forget anything. But yeah, uh, keep calm and tarot on, be the hero on story, support Polina Cassidy and buy the stack or I don't know, the US game systems, whatever. This is a great deck. Get it if you want. Get it, get it, get it. And I will see you next time. Ooh.